Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, in this video, I wanna talk about who the DMT doctors are. I mentioned these entities in one of my last videos, the DMT operating room. So if you want to know more details about them, go check that video out. Uh, but basically to summarize it very quickly and briefly, they are these faceless entities made of light that are operating on thousands of people in an incredibly bizarre and hyper real way. Um, and through these operations, they will actually transform people's lives sometimes permanently. Or well, at least, you know, for a very long time. But it sounds like these uh, operations are having very long lasting effects on most people. I'm not going to be talking about this in terms of our psychedelic hallucinations reel. I have already made a video on that anyway. I'm just going to be talking about how the DMT doctors feel as you perceive them while you're tripping. Because I think that's more or less the same for everybody. People are just interpreting it, you know, differently after the trip. So the first thing I want to address, are these entities evil? Obviously, a lot of people who are encountering these entities don't know what to make of it, um, especially if they don't allow the operation to take place. If they're afraid and they push the entities away, the operation uh, won't happen. And so you won't know what was going to happen if you didn't allow it to. Um, but... I don't have any evidence to suggest that these, uh, that these entities sorry, are anything but benevolent beings. Um, simply because every operation I've heard about has a positive effect. Um, every person who's been affected permanently by these DMT doctors uh, firsthand have reported being able to see all the negative patterns of behavior and these operations have allowed these people to rewrite their negative patterns of behavior with something healthier. So yeah, there's no reason why I think these entities are evil but I can understand why people are afraid of these beings. We're naturally afraid of the unknown and these entities are super mysterious, but not only that, we're often afraid of things that hold power over us because you know that's an element we can't control and not completely know. Um, and these entities always seem to have a position of dominance or seem to govern us in some way when we encounter them. Obviously, if you see them in the DMT operating room, they are, you know, performing some kind of operation directly molding you and, and you know, changing you. Um, so they have some sort of, you know, power in that way. And because they're hyper real, it also, you know, it's so mysterious and so frightening and scary. You have no idea what's going on. You're just at the whim of these entities who seem to know what's going on. They're just performing some kind of crazy operation, which feels like, you know, basically programming you for when you return into the matrix or the simulation or some shit like that. These are very human concepts, obviously. It's, it's not exactly how it feels when you're there, but it's something like that because it feels like it's hyper reality that you've popped into. But it's not just the DMT operating room where we meet these entities. These white faceless beings are reported in all sorts of different roles. If you have been watching this channel for a long time, you will know that I have actually discussed these entities um, in different trip reports without realizing that everybody was experiencing them in the DMT operating room. But for example, one of the ways in which we get a sense that they have this dominant role over us or that they govern us, um, one of the uh, earlier trips I had that involved them I remember they just popped into my reality. It felt like they came in from, this is a very strange um, description, but this is the first word that came into my head at the time. It felt like they entered my reality perpendicularly. What I mean by that is it feels like we abide by, you know, this linear time where there's a start and an end, but it felt like that these beings came from around uh, a realm, sorry, that did not abide by that same linear time perception. And so they had the ability to, kind of just enter our reality at any point that they wished. It almost felt like our reality is a movie for these beings, like they are the audience. So they could pick, you know, whichever time in this reality uh, that they wanted to pop into and influence. And obviously this is pretty full on and like alludes to how they kind of have more power over us because they seem aware of us, even though we're not aware of them. But it does get uh, even more hectic than that. In one of my last trip reports, I was explaining how I had a vision of these entities literally controlling my neighbors. Um, I saw the faceless entities basically riding my neighbors or speaking to one another through my neighbors as if they were the vehicles for these entities to be able to inhabit this reality. As if we are like some kind of super advanced technology that enables them to experience what we experience. And again, guys, I know how crazy all of this sounds. Um, I wasn't told this sort of information during the trip. This is me just kind of trying to, while I'm tripping, rationalize what I'm seeing. Um, 
it's not necessarily my interpretation of, of what's going on here in reality, but I'm just trying to do my best to explain, you know, what you experience when you encounter these entities and why they are so intimidating and full on. Just to give you guys a, a sense of how full on it can get, um, you may have seen my video about the Truman Show effect, uh, but in case you haven't, basically a long time ago I had this experience where I actually felt like I became one of these white faceless beings. It was so convincing that I did end up, you know, stripping naked and running through my streets, um, as some of you know. And the reason why I was comfortable doing this was because I wasn't perceiving my neighbors the same way I do now. I didn't see them in as independent individuals. I only sensed the hive mind intelligence in all of my neighbors. And as they were coming up in, you know, this reality to kind of calm me down, I perceived them as coming up to congratulate me for entering, you know, this, this layer of reality for waking up and seeing things as they are sort of thing. <laughs> I can't remember if they physically looked like the white faceless entities. Um, I definitely know like I could, everything still more or less looked the same as it does now, but I just don't remember ever noticing anybody's faces. They all just seemed blank as they all shared this hive mind intelligence that was kind of communicating to me telepathically. Um, and we were all just joking with one another. We just, I was like laughing with them about the fact that, you know, I have woken up in real reality and that very soon I was going to return to playing my character, who is me when I'm sober, the person who's talking to you right now. And that I was going to totally forget that that's the real reality and probably totally forget about that experience. Um, and I think, you know, the morning after I had a very vague memory, but it was after some time that these memories started to come back. They felt a little bit repressed, at least, uh, you know, strong chunks of the trip, which I had to unlock, um, through future trips. Basically, uh, it was just like giving me a piece of the jigsaw puzzle each time. Cause it never felt like I was, I was meant to remember these entities. I remember there was one trip in particular where I literally just like, came out of the experience, my mind was blown because for the first time I'd remembered these entities and I had flashbacks to meeting these entities countless um, amounts of times, but my memory was just getting like blanked every time I would return back into being me. Now, as terrifying as this experience um, sounds, it was actually pretty beautiful going through it. Um, I mean, it was full on. And even at the time I had no idea what was going on. Um, and until the point where I just wasn't me anymore, but I remember that there seemed to be this insane revelation that, um, you know, we don't have to like all of these worries we have, um, they're kind of, they're, they're, they're on their way out. We're not meant to be worrying as much as we do. Um, we're not meant to have so much ego and identify with the body as we do because these entities were kind of trying to say that, yeah, they are our true selves. At the root of all of us, we have this hive mind intelligence. We share the same consciousness, the same soul sort of thing. Something insane like that. And they were basically saying we need to stop um, associating with our individual bodies so much. Stop. We have to stop wanting to show off to other people to acquire so much for uh, validation because we're all the same consciousness. We're all the same soul. It was something along those lines. So it was obviously like a really like cliche and, you know, beautiful message. Um, but yeah, and, and I, I won't lie to you guys. I did uh, in, in integrate a lot of um, these experiences. And to me, to question the authenticity of these experiences is to question my reality itself because um, in the same way that this reality, while we're sober, feels real, that reality feels realer. You know, when we go in a, we, we have a dream, there's no sense of that realness there. In this reality, there is this sense of continuity, the sense of, okay, you know, this is real. It just feels real. All of that sense of continuity and all that sense of, yeah, this feels real is heightened to the max when, when you're in these realms and when you meet these entities or become these entities. So, I definitely integrate a lot of what I learned from here. I understand if you've never gone through this, how insane that makes me sound. I was like so strictly against any of these interpretations um, before I ever had these experiences or especially before I did psychedelics. Um, so I totally, you know, can understand why I would sound insane to say that I actually don't just immediately dismiss these experiences. But basically, um, that's all I can really say in terms of who these entities are um, without... Um, 
sharing my interpretations of who these entities are, what I've made sense of after the trip. Um, because, you know, I could say these guys, the, you know, the entities that created the matrix or the simulation that we're in, and I've had trips that kind of make me feel like that while I'm there. But that I would be lying and I'd be misleading you if I said that's what was getting explained to me while I was tripping, because it's, it's extremely hard to comprehend what I'm seeing and what I'm perceiving while I'm tripping. You know, the, the whole idea of us being in a simulation, as we understand it, it's very much based on our current technology. I'm sure in a thousand years, we'd have something else to compare ultimate reality with um, in terms of what technology is available to us. And so we'll be able to comprehend it in a totally different way. And that's why I don't want to make sense of these experiences. But one thing I can tell you is that I do believe these entities have a name. If you've been watching this channel, you know already you know, what I've been referring to them as. And the name that they've been given is, um, well, the machine elves. That's, that's who these entities are normally referred to um, as. There are, you know, countless reports online of the machine elves. I do think thousands upon thousands of people are experiencing these entities. But I also believe there's a lot of false reports out there because the name is quite misleading. I don't think it actually has much to do with their physical appearance. Um, you know, obviously the way I've explained it has no similarities to machine elves and even Terence McKenna himself once described these beings um, being made of light. So, you know, um, I, I don't know exactly why they are always referred to as the machine elves. Even me, when I came out of my trip, my DMT, uh, my first DMT breakthrough where I met these entities, I was saying over and over that they are the machine elves. I'd heard about Terence McKenna's uh, trip reports of the machine elves. He's the guy who named them, of course. But um, yeah, they had no physical similarities to his descriptions. There just must have been something during the trip that made me feel like they were the same entities. But uh, yeah, I, I might just refer to them as the faceless light beings or something like that from now on because I feel like machine elves distracts from who they really are and how it feels when you experience them. It cheapens the experience a lot because when you encounter the real machine elves, it's the most insane experience you can ever go through, in my opinion. Um, as Terence McKenna himself said, if aliens were to land right next to the Pentagon, it would have nowhere near the same like mind-blowing um, impact that meeting these entities on DMT would have on you. Because it's I, I never thought this sort of experience was possible before I ever did psychedelics. I really didn't. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I could talk for hours about the machine holes, so I've got to stop at some point. Um, but if you did have, you know, more questions, I have made lots of videos in the past um, on the machine elves. Otherwise, feel free to ask ahead and I'll try and answer those questions in the future. I want to thank all my patrons for supporting this channel. Um, I appreciate it so much. And I'm really excited to be finally actually, you know, creating more videos for Trip Whip because it's something I want to keep doing. So your support definitely means a lot to me. Uh, if you guys want to support this channel, feel free to check the link down in the comments below. Um, I'm hoping to start making some more like patron exclusive content in the future as well um, but otherwise guys hope you're having a freaking awesome day if you're listening to the machine there's obviously no reason not to have an awesome day and i'll see you all soon